we're on. All right, fantastic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Wise Leader interview. I'm excited to be here with Megan Conter, and she is the founder of The Dames, which is a amazing group of women business owners, politicians, women from corporate who are just powerhouses working together to continue to grow, to increase their revenue, and to support each other. So thank you, Megan, for being here today. Thank you, Donna. I'm super excited. You're such a great member to have in the Dames, and I've been really enjoying your book. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, I just want to appreciate you for showing up and for all you do for women as well. Um, I'd love to know how you got started on that journey of lifting women up. Yeah, i fortunate enough to have been raised by an amazing mother and amazing father who both were instrumental in lifting women up my whole life. So it was very clear and apparent to me that in my family, women were treated equal and were, we were working all of us to get us to that point where women are really considered equal and they are there is equity amongst all of us. So my mom has been in the world of nonprofits and volunteering for as long as I can remember working with every nonprofit having to do with women and girls in Colorado Springs. And my dad was always there supporting my mom in her endeavors and me and mine. And never once did I hear a message that would make me think that I couldn't do whatever I wanted to do in this world. So that's where the roots really came from. And as an only child, I grew up kind of needing to surround myself with a family, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're not born with brothers and sisters, you have friends who become those siblings. And of course that becomes your community. And then I remember a, a story very clearly when I was in college and I was in a room with a bunch of different, probably like 25 different people. And they were all just kind of remarking how the heck did we all get together? This is such a strange conglomeration of people. And everyone looked at me and pointed at me. They're like, you, Conter, you're the one. And it's always been that way. I've always brought people together. Community has been huge in my world and my life. And I've always loved the, the what happens when you get great minds together and the laughter that occurs to, which is of course, one of the tenets of the dames. And the magic and the collaboration and the brain power that really lifts everyone up. So it's my background is everything that brought me to where I am today. And, you know, starting my marketing business back in 2010 was sort of a first foray into the professional world where I actually felt like I was a contribution to the professional world because prior to that in corporate, I never really felt like I was important in in that world, in the roles that I had as, you know, marketing assistant and the other lowly levels, it was just really depressing to me. So I was, I've always been a leader. And so when I got into that world, it was like, man, this is, if this is what my professional life is going to be like for the next, however long I'm in trouble. So all I can say is thank God for the recession, which had me lose my job, my last job and intuition took over and brand divinity took over and made me connect with all of these amazing entrepreneurs, which caused me to start my own business. And that was sort of the springboard for everything. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I know um, this is my second business. And when I took the, the leap again, I went to work for someone else for a little while. And it just was that leap of faith. It was that intuition of this is not quite where I'm meant to be. This is not my best work. Um, and just kind of leaping into that unknown. And sometimes you just, you just have to. And it's very interesting because when you know you're meant to be an entrepreneur, you just know it to the deepest core of your bones. And so, you know, even though I went through the ramen years, as I call them in the first three <laughs> of the business, and it was like, yeah, I got to figure out how to support myself. It was still this feeling of God, I would, I wouldn't give this up for anything. I wouldn't give this up to go back to a steady paycheck if you tried. Mm -hmm. So it, it definitely, if you make it past those first three years, you usually will succeed. And that's because I believe you have the tenacity that it takes. You have the resilience that it takes. 
And hopefully as a woman, you develop your intuition and you really figure out how to get in alignment with a big vision and you start moving toward that on a consistent basis, letting nothing get in your way. Yeah, I love that. Can you speak more to what you just said is as a woman, hopefully you rely on that intuition because I think that's an important piece that we don't talk about a lot. There's a lot that yeah, there's a lot that we are really in the midst of right now in terms of what I see as a giant paradigm shift between masculine ego-driven leadership and feminine softer leadership. And it doesn't mean that every man has that ego-driven energy. That's not what I'm saying. It's it's very much a change. We're going from a patriarchy system into something that I hope is much more community oriented. But a big portion of that is you know, when you see women who are trying to act like men growing into leadership positions or see women trying to behave like all the men in all the business books to grow their businesses, it's really depressing because you see a woman losing herself in the process of doing whatever that is. You see her losing her true essence to try to be someone that she's not from a genetic level, from a, but also from an energetic level. So for me, I'm just... Um, I'm very convinced that as soon as I started my business was really that spark that got me to start thinking about who I was spiritually. And I began on my spiritual path around the same time, getting very clear from the early get-go that if I don't figure out who my, what my intuition is and how it speaks to me and where it comes from and how to trust it, that I'm not going to enjoy myself very much. And I'm not going to be a very great leader. So really it's about understanding and doing the work that you need to really dig deep and find where your intuition is and how it communicates to you because it's different for literally everyone. And then to really, the second part is the hardest, trusting it and listening to it and following it because sometimes it gives you the weirdest directions and guidelines and, and steps to take. And you're like, your logic mind tries to take over and say, no, that's not, that's not the plan. And that has been an interesting struggle for me in business over the years. It's just uh, really, no, I've got to stop listening to my logic mind that's trying to keep me small and trying to keep me doing things the way the business books do. And I've instead got to listen to my intuition and really let it guide me and trust it, dang it, because it knows what it's doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So many golden nuggets in what you just said. I mean, I think that Coming from that first part of what you said, um, women, you know, parody their, you know, the mentors they've had, which are often men, or as you said, the business books. And that's one of the things I talk about in that chapter about finding your voice, right? And not having to imitate anybody else and really um, leading with that authenticity and genuineness. Um, and women do tend to be more intuitive. And I think that there's a lot of uh, messages out there that that's not the right way to lead, that it has to make logical sense. And like you, I mean, learning to tap into your intuition, then trust it and follow it. That is such a journey because sometimes things are just coming out of left field, it seems. And you're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> but and you have no idea what lies on the other side of that. Totally. And, and a lot of it for me was really trusting in. So the work that I did a lot previous to starting the Dames was marketing consulting work. And when I realized and I allowed myself to own the fact that a lot of my genius and my magic came from just being quiet and letting messages come in and come through me. And it was like, they would pour through in these droves because I didn't stop them. I wasn't creating a bottleneck any longer and I was letting it come in. And so as soon as I was able to embrace that, I've got this creative intuition that's driving my secret sauce, I felt free. And then it, the, the clients were magnetized. The right clients were magnetized yeah. and it's, so when you're thinking about yourself as a leader, a lot of women are afraid to embrace what it is that truly makes them different feminine wise, that intuitive energy, or, you know, some people call it, there's all kinds of different terms for what people call it. But if we can embrace and figure out what our secret sauce is and really truly allow ourselves to be that and do that and have it, 
the people who we need to lead come and follow as well, because chances are they've been feeling stuck and cloistered in themselves, not feeling free to be able to express either. Many of the women that I worked with in my marketing business were in male dominated industries. And so they, they came to me wanting to be able to stand apart as a pioneer that they have been, but being afraid of showing their true essence and being afraid of showing maybe their quirks or the, just the things that are not very professional in a masculine patriarchal standard. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're really changing. Not, and I'm not necessarily saying that we have to go to the full woo side, like I can go to, but that we really need to understand that we, we need to change. We are in the middle of a change. And if we don't allow that to happen, we're never going to achieve, achieve equality. Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah, I agree completely. And I think it's important to say like equality doesn't mean swinging all the way to the feminine either. It really is the, the yin and the yang and the balance. And when we have that balance, we get the best of both worlds. And that's, I think that's how we, how we grow, how we have innovation, how, you know, I think when you have diversity and different perspectives, you get more creativity, you get more progress, you get more momentum. And then you, like you said, you bring in intersectionality into the conversation. And now we have diversity as it relates to a lot of other factors, not just masculine and feminine energy. Mm -hmm. It does take bringing all people to the table in order to create a place of balance and a place of equity and a place of goodness for all. Yeah. We're moving there. Yeah, we are. I really believe it. I mean, as tumultuous as this last year has been, I really feel that those are the signs of a paradigm shift. Those are the wake up calls and the shaking things up. And Yes, it's hard to live through. I I don't minimize that, but it's also the sign that there's great opportunity for growth. It's necessary. Yes, I agree. Big changes just don't happen very easily or they happen so slowly and so incrementally that it's painful for society. Yes, it's hard when things get totally shaken up. It's very difficult because if you're change avoidant or if you're not a flexible character, in character, it can be really, really rough. Mm -hmm. But I think that for myself, when I was reading your book and thinking about my qualities as a leader, my flexibility is one of the top because it's, if you can't let things go by that really don't need to get you all wound up, you'll go crazy. And if you can't allow yourself to be elastic and to really change with the things that are trying so hard to evolve, if you just hold those things in place, eventually it's like this hard ball that's just going to explode. So we need to be flexible. We need to be resilient. We need to be very flowing with things, mm-hmm. just like that feminine energy of receiving and flowing and yeah, in order to really make change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think if you embrace that feminine en- energy, you do flow because that's a very, very feminine energy. And I think those obstacles you were talking about, that's kind of like part two of the book, right? It's really, um, most of those come from the logical brain, right? The fear, the self-sabotage, um, you know, all those things where you're, where you're feeling stuck or where you're feeling a lack of self-worth or the imposter syndrome. It's like where we're overanalyzing, And I see that a lot in high achievers, right? Like we can really (laughs) overthink something and ruminate and just spin on it. And that's where too, having your tribe, I think is so important, which is obviously what you've created with the dames because one, I absolutely love that laughter and humor is a part of the dames. That is such a core tenant of my personality. Like my house is about laughing and dancing in the kitchen. Like that typifies my house. And um, so bringing that levity, laughing at ourselves and having other women to say, A, I've been there and B, almost like snap out of it, you've got this (laughs) is so important. You need that tribe to check yourself and check those 
thoughts and cheer you on along the way? It's crucial because it, as you're growing and you're being stretched out to the farthest extent of how you've ever been stretched. If you're a business owner, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, and at each echelon, when you're going over that hundred thousand dollar mark and you're going over the two fifty K when you're going over the 500 K and these aren't like fine, these aren't hard drawn lines or anything, but at each level it's different. It's very different energetically, mm -hmm. physically, spiritually, emotionally, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing that I think you know, of course, Brene Brown has led the charge in this, but vulnerability and our ability as women to, maybe not our ability, our need as women to be vulnerable and to share what's going on in our worlds, not from a place of like stirring in the negativity, but from a place of, it is not always sunshine, rainbows, unicorn farts, and everything golden. It is not. And so we, we really need to, as women, not put on this mask or this fake facade of everything's fine. Everything's fine. No, really. It's just, it's fine because deep inside, we know we're calling ourselves BS and we're also dying to say, okay, I need to be my real self here. And I think that's what the dames has all been about from the very beginning. I said, you know, my top two values are fun and love. And so if it doesn't have those things in it, I'm not doing it. If we're not laughing and we're not enjoying ourselves and we're not what I love to call getting out of serious, then I don't want to have anything to do with it because there's plenty in business that is full of seriousness all day long, all day long. Yeah. And it really stifles and can stifle that creativity. So I think, I think that's what was the number one reason why humor had to be in it for me. Not only that I was raised in a family of nut jobs and I love to be crazy <laughs> and just have a lot of fun. Um, but also because I saw how much, man, I can still remember going to some retreats early on in growing my business where they use this energy of like, you've got to do this in order to get there or else you're going to peril. You're going to, and this energy of like putting you in a pressure cooker that mm -hmm. felt like the last feminine, there's no drop of feminine energy in any of that. And I remember leaving some of those retreats feeling completely defeated and like, man, I'm never doing this again. I'm not going down that path with that kind of energy, those kinds of people, that kind of way. So we bring it up, we bring the energy high, we bring the vibration high, and that's how things get done. And we're all serious business women who have achieved six figures in our business or seven figures, or we've achieved six figures in salaries and we're growing toward that C-suite. We're all high-performing women. Mm -hmm. And- we know that having fun is extremely important to keep our sanity and to make it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a piece I work on with my clients all the time. And that's a huge piece of positive psychology. You know, when we positive psychology, for those of you who don't know, is the study of people who are thriving, who are the most successful in the world. And guess what? They take breaks. They take time to rejuvenate. They value their relationships. They laugh. All of these things are so important. And as high achievers, we can get into this like nose to the grindstone. And we've all heard it, like pull yourself up by your bootstraps and all of this stuff. And sometimes actually, and again, that's a very masculine energy. Sometimes we actually take, have to take our foot off the gas and just, yep. as you said, get quiet, listen to what you really need. Um, and like you also said earlier about your people will find you, right? When you settle yep. in to your message and your voice and get really clear um, what it is you want, your people are just going to be drawn to you. Yeah. You, you become magnetic as a, as a business owner, as a career person, as a company, you become magnetic. The key there is, you know, with my marketing and branding background is you've got to be consistent and you've got to articulate that. So it's really understanding and, and knowing what your brand is and being unapologetically expressive of that brand, whatever it is. And that can be the done the same if you're a raging extrovert like me or a, an introvert like a lot of people. You just need to figure out what that is and bring those people to you. And you know what I can say just about what you're just saying is I, there's this clear distinction I can see in my mind every time I think of 
what it felt like when I was growing my marketing business and what it feels like when I'm growing the dames. I tried to grow my marketing business in a very, you know, not that strategy and tactics are wrong because they're absolutely imperative, but that was first. It was always like, I have to follow the strategy. I have to follow the plan. I have to follow it to a T and it's gotta be this step by this step by this step. And it was like this painful trudge up the world's most long hiking trail that is interminable versus the dames, which every single next big step has come to me literally sitting in meditation and in quiet and in working and in being slow and in letting things come through me. And it's mm -hmm. grown three times faster and it's 10 times more fun. So <laughs> from that perspective, I am witnessing and I'm experiencing the paradigm shift in myself and in this business in action. And it's mm -hmm. impeccably beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I have found that being a business owner has been probably the deepest level <laughs> of personal growth I've ever done. It's yep. like everything. And I believe this for everyone, whether you're in corporate or anything else, like everything on the inside shows up on the outside too. And so when there's something going on in your life that you're um, not loving, <laughs> let's say, you just need to look at what's going on inside because it's a mirror. It's a mirror. Yep. Yeah. And it's my belief is that you can only grow as much professionally as you're willing to grow personally. And so that's part of the dames. It's like we, chances are women who aren't willing to go deep and to grow, per, grow personally aren't going to resonate with our community because it's, it's definitely a lot of, a lot of seekers, a lot of deep thinkers, a lot of those who are willing to go deep within and do a lot of healing to figure out who they are and to continue to grow. It's never, and we know that it's not, there's no finite path. It's like, you don't finish it at 42 years old. You don't finish it at 30, <laughs> right. 35 or whatever. It's, it's a lifelong journey. And so that, you know, and I feel like in my experience, and I've been out of corporate for like 11 years, but in my experience, the entrepreneurial world is much more open and forgiving of that journey and that outward growth that outward expression of growth and the outward expression of healing, um, where in corporate, I felt like a very divided woman. I felt like I had to have my professional self at work and my personal stuff at home. And there was no intermingling of the two. And if I did, one of the male bosses was sure to let me know that that wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. That was my experience. And when I w moved into the world of an entrepreneur, it was like, Ah, the angels started singing to me and I felt like, wow, okay, these are my people. This is the world that I was meant to be born into where my personal and my professional life could merge into one because I am not a person walking split down the middle. I'm just not. Right. right. We're all integrative and it's interesting because the, the clients that choose me to work with, um, they typically choose me because I am also a psychologist in addition to being a coach and they want to understand themselves better. They want to get to the root of it all. And they want an expert who can help understand like why their brain works this way and why they're behaving this way. And, you know, in my love of working with people in corporate, it's to change that culture, right? So you don't have to be split anymore so that we can embrace feminine energy in the workplace. And so that we can understand that when work culture embraces people's strengths, passion, purpose, like everything thrives because Absolutely. Not, entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. But yep. we're not here to be miserable in our jobs. Whatever track you choose, I don't, whatever you believe in, whether it's God, the divine, whatever, you know, we're not here on this planet to be miserable. That, that wasn't the intention. No, and thank God for you and for the, the people who magnet, that you magnetize because that you are the kind of leader that is going to change the world of corporate. And it's, it's that same incremental shift that's happening in, you know, when the paradigm from, for women is also happening in corporate and it has to, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, all small business can't change the world. It's got to 
come from the, the corporations too. And so the work that you're doing is empowering women who then move up into the high leadership positions and then take charge. And that's where the change really happens. Yeah. And so it's all happening at the same time. It's not just about getting the women up there. It's about getting the right women up there who understand that they don't need to be a bifurcated person. They need Absolutely. to be an integrated leader. Yeah. And that's why I chose to work with, with leaders and executives. Um, you may have heard me say this before, but my, my mission is to create 1 million conscious leaders in the world. And um, some people ask me if I keep a tally <laughs> of that. I don't, you know, um, but I figure, you know, if I am impacting this person and they impact 50 people, 100 people, you know, then that's part of my tally. That's that amazing ripple effect that we can have in the world. Absolutely. And that's, that is the ripple and you have an intuitive tally anyways, you know where you are. Yeah. yeah. I probably have about 250,000 at this point. So I'm well on my way to achieving my goal. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's beautiful that the work that you're, the work that you're doing. And yes, I agree that your psychology background brings, I mean, in droves, that experience helps what you're doing so much and it's so needed. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your brilliance. Well, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I um, describe my brain to people like um, pinball. It's like ding, 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 <laughs> right? Because I just hear these little nuggets and then I'm like, oh, that's how it all connects. And then, um, it's such a powerful moment when my clients are like, oh, that's so it, right? Yeah. And it's just, that's, you know, that's when my heart is full. That's when I feel so aligned with my purpose and vision. Yeah, I call it playing Tetris. It's yes, that's really not a great one, right? Yeah, and that's, yeah. honestly, that's the secret sauce in the work in my marketing world and that I still do is just, being able to see this female CEO who has just some pieces that are in her Tetris game that are a little out of order. And if we can move those out of the way and get it all fitting in so that she can actually have this flowing aligned business that really matches herself, her values, exactly where she's headed. And then she has a clear path to get there. Don't watch out. She's not yeah. going to stop. Yeah. And that's you know, we're full of a lot of women that are doing huge things and making great impact. And we're all in supporting each other in this very effective strategic way. Um, I like to joke that we're not the, the typical sisterhood where you're going to stand around and hook arms and sing Kumbaya. We're a little bit more kooky than that, but we, we do the job and we do it well. Helping yeah, each other. absolutely. It is such a, um, as I when Ashley was uh, uh, recruiting for the Chicago chapter, um, Ashley Quinto Powell, for those of you. And um, I was like, I'm, I'm tired of networking groups that don't go anywhere, right? And she assured me that that was not the case. And, you know, I've really been blown away by all that the Dames offers. Like my calendar is blowing up with all the different opportunities that are there. And um, just like you said, that these are women who are powerhouses. And I just, I just love this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's great that we have so many different networks that have popped up around the world. And it's, we need each and every one of them to create community because community is what literally shifts everything. And I knew that, that by setting the target audience the way that I did when I did it, and by sticking to that the whole way along, that we were going to create a community of caliber. And high caliber means we share similar challenges, we share similar solutions, because we're similar at similar stages of business, we need to overcome very similar things. So it's beautiful when you go into a community and you know that when you express a problem that you're having, like all of these ears are going to understand exactly what you're talking about. It's not going to be over their heads or, you know, you can go up the ladder to the people who've been there, done that, you know, 10 years ago and have scaled their businesses and know the solutions to the issues. And you can go directly to the, to the source of the problem. You're not all in business basics, one-on-one -on -one together, trying to get those initial battle scars 
covered yeah. up. You know, we've all been there, done that. And that's, I think that is the, one of my favorite parts about the dames is that you turn around and you look around and you're like, yeah, these are my, this is my tribe. These are Absolutely. my people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so one last question for you. Um, do you have a favorite part of the book? Right now, um, and I, it's a good thing I pulled that up so that I don't butcher <laughs> that. Um, I really enjoyed the chapter and you'll know which chapter it was, but where you were talking about the um, positivity boosters, enablers, and negativity reducers. Mm -hmm. And the, the three to one ratio in terms of our brains being wired for finding those things that are wrong and finding the negative things. And of course we're built to fix problems, right? But then that tends to create what a lot of people would call a shame spiral or it creates negative spirals. And we've got to counteract those with three to one positive versus negative and really find those things that light us up and get back on that path to you know, regrow those neuro pathways that we may have tromped down, down the wrong, down the wrong lane. So mm -hmm. not that it's not that there's anything wrong, but there are better choices to make when you're a leader and you're really um, wanting to stay on top of your game. Letting yourself yeah. get dragged by, down by the negative spirals is not going to help you, nor is it going to help everyone that you're here to impact. So right. I really practical tips in that chapter. Yeah. And I love something you said earlier, like about it, you know, it's not always sunshine and roses <laughs> and rainbows, but you can't get stuck there either. I mean, as a psychologist, I don't want you to deny your emotions, right? Like you said, everything's fine. That leads to drinking the bottle of wine at night or <laughs> the bag of potato chips. We all know that we've all been there. Right. But, um, you have to allow yourself the feeling and then, and then move on. You know, my, my mom always says, you know, feelings are just energy passing through and you just have to allow that to happen. When we ruminate, they last longer. When we create active strategies for managing our emotions and managing our minds, they can, they can pass through easier and, and we can cope better. Absolutely. Or, you know, as you know, if you stuff it down, it just manifests in different ways and typically ways that are a lot uglier than if you just felt it for the 90 seconds it takes to feel it when it comes up, Yeah, you know? But I think our culture also, we could go into a whole conversation on this, but our culture has a propensity to numb. And so, I mean, mm -hmm. you can listen to any other podcast I've been on to learn about my journey with choosing to go sober as a former gray area drinker. And I was great at ignoring the problems and just drinking to get numb and walk away from it. And yeah, you can't walk away from it because it comes up and hits you harder later. So yeah. learning yeah. that I needed to move alcohol off to the side and get it away from me forced me to then feel even more. And trust mm -hmm. me, if you haven't gone sober for longer than 90 days, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's feeling the feelings when you are sober is real and it takes courage, but it's also one of the most fascinating, fabulous ways to really feel life and to understand what feelings are uh, and to really know how to process a feeling and let it do its thing and then move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. In a previous episode, we had Lauren McLaughlin on and she is, I want to say 16 and a half years sober. And yes, I heard that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's wonderful and hilarious, I must yes. say. And um, yeah, it's just a very, it's a very different journey and learning how to not numb out is really important, you know? Yep. I um one of the reasons that I'm starting this this new group of wise leaders this small group is so women can be totally real and not have to worry about depositioning themselves as a leader and they can right. they can bring their obstacles their feelings their strategy all of it to the table without um without feeling judged and and just to be open to that that's key yeah, I'm glad you're doing that. That's yeah. necessary, especially for women who are in leadership positions in corporate to be Absolutely. able to feel that they have that safe space. 
because it's yeah. not in a lot of corporations yet. It's true. That's true. But we're going to change that. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, Megan, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I want to be respectful of your time as a busy woman. And um, you are welcome on this show anytime. I'm I'm grateful you're here. And I'm I'm truly grateful that you that you started the dames because it's been a really enriching experience for me. Me too. Thank you. And thank you for your work in the world. It's much thank needed. Thank you.